All right, in this video, I'll be showing you how to host DeepSeek R1 in 10 minutes. And at the end, I will connect it to the Slack bot I created in the last video. Now, honestly, man, I don't think it's gonna take even 10 minutes. With that being said, let's jump right in. All right, so this is a three-step process. First, we need to choose a cloud provider. In this video, I'll be using Rompot. Rompot is a platform that provides cloud-based compute resources, especially tailored for machine learning, deep learning, and other GPU-intensive tasks. A couple of the providers I know are Replicate, DigitalOcean, and of course, big players like AWS, Azure, and GCP. Honestly, I haven't tried out other platforms, but I've heard a lot of good things about Rumpod and how they offer the best rate for GPU, so I had to try them out. Rumpod basically offers two ways to use their GPU. One, pod, two, serverless. How I'm understanding the difference between the two are pod is like EC2 instance. You rent a pod and it's always running. You need to handle scaling yourself though. And a serverless is like a Lambda instance. It's activated only it's activated only when you use it and the scaling is handled by Rumpod. The catch is per second cost is cheaper for pod. So choose your option accordingly depending on your need. For both options, it's basically running Docker image under the hood. So for pod, you have two options. One, you can bring your own image, or two, use pre-built Docker images by the community. For serverless, there are actually three options. One, you can, of course, bring your own Docker image. Two, you can connect to your GitHub repository, which contains your Docker, Docker file. And then you can have Rampod build the image and run that image. And three is quick deploy. You can basically deploy models with a couple of clicks. And under quick deploy, there are, there are several options such as VLLM, SGLang, and etc. And in this video, I'll be using VLLM. So VLLM is basically is an inference server that speeds up the output of LLMs. This is done by making better use of the GPU memory. Using VLLM with quick deploy, you can basically host any models you want on Hugging Face in a couple of clicks by simply providing the name of the model. So if you go to your RAM pod, you see these two options, pod and serverless. For now, uh, for this video, you go to serverless and then it will show you this page and you choose this serverless VLLM under quick deploy. And here you can choose any the uh, hugging face model. So you go to hugging face for not for this video. We'll be using DeepSeek R1, and there are different. Uh, as I talked in the last video, there are different uh, versions of DeepSeek R1, and for this video, I'll be using DeepSeek R1 Distilled Coin Seven B. So you just click on hugging face, on copy this name tag, and go back to Rampod, and then paste it. And next, here you do uh, a couple of different settings, but the one that uh, you should be doing is called max token length. Ooh. Oh, max model length, my bad. So basically you set this to 8192. Honestly, it might work without you even setting this, but this is what's suggested in the guide. So you set this to one eight, eight you set this to eight one nine two and you and then you go to next. Here you can you can choose the GPU size, but I'm just gonna go with the one that's recommended. And for max workers I will set it to one for now. And idle time I'll set it to like one twenty because I don't want the worker to go timeout after five seconds and then execute time execution timeout i'll set it to thousand because just in case the first ex execution takes a lot of time and you deploy it and boom our self-hosted deep seek r1 is up and running now and now we connect our slack bot to point to his inference point so this is basically the inference endpoint. So if you run it, um, it sends a request to the endpoint. And now, uh, worker is running. If you go to log, 
not logs of bond right now but what it's basically doing is downloading the model and trying to do the inference so the first time it's gonna take probably around like three four minutes um because it needs to download a big model and do all that the other configuration but after that's done from the second inference from the second request um it's gonna be pretty quick so while it's doing the work let's connect um or slack bot to the endpoint all right so basically this is the application so there is only one thing that you need to change so before we were using reply function which is this so when a text comes in it sends the text to our locally hosted deepseek r1 and do the inference there but instead we'll use inference function this inference function is defined in the function.py so this inference function is basically doing the two things since since run pod endpoint is an async endpoint it's sending the request to the endpoint and they're receiving the job id and it's checking the status of the job id using this check status function so it sends a request here and then it checks the status in the while loop so go back here i have this set to inference function and then i will just start the script and now my flask app is running go back here to the terminal Insert and grok like we did last time. Uh, is it 8000? Yeah. Okay, so now our and grok is running. I'll go ahead and set up some Slack configuration. I'll be right back. All right, I'm back. So I've done the setup on the Slack side. So now the Slack bot is connected to our Flask app. And if Flask, Flask app is pointing towards to the Rampart endpoint, so it should all work fine now. All right, let's go back here, Slack bot, and let's see if it's working. It's gonna be a joke. If I sent it, okay, we receive the event, and go back to Rampart endpoint, and let's see request. <laughs> ah okay so i forgot to do one thing so i need to go back here and change the rom pod endpoint id so basically what you do is you need to come here and grab this endpoint id and then swap swap the environment variable i'll do it right now and be right back real quick Alright, so I changed my rampart endpoint ID in the dot m file, so now it should all work fine now. So first you we send the request again to the dot well. Tell me a joke. And go back here, check yes, it received the request, and go back here the endpoint. If refresh yeah it's completed the request already and one feel the down smile yeah it's making them some stuff right but you see like all this is connected now and it's working so this is how you self host deepseek r1 i know the model is not as good as the full size deepseek r1 model but the, as the industry progressed and the open source source models becomes better and better we could definitely have our models hosted on our servers and use that to handle tasks that requires a lot of tokens all right thank you for watching i'll see you in the next one